this whole thing has come back with a vengeance now um, with new pending legislation where um, where they're wanting to create antennas, uh, broadcasting boluses for cows. So cows would swallow uh, little um, a- uh, transmitters and it would monitor uh, their guts. And a lot of this is being done under the guise of climate change and global warming to monitor methane and burps and farts and, you know, those kinds of things. And, um, and, and to create an internet of things around your farm, the, you know, it's one thing. And and so I got to admit, you know, this is a, It's a tension for me because on our farm, we have struggled and struggled and struggled in our farm store, for example, to handle um, credit cards. Many times the internet, you know, our very fragile internet thing goes out and then, you know, somebody wants to buy, you you can't handle a transaction. But there's a big difference in Cena, you might be able to shed a little bit of light on this in in the science of it, but there's a big difference between the the electromagnetic frequencies and kind of the the the, the overall um uh what's called the you know the, the the kind of the wireless mesh if you will um or, or some people are calling it the digital gulag <laughs> all right but there's a big difference between a physical cable a, a physical broadband cable laid in the ground versus broadcasting antennas everywhere and uh, and this this whole EMF thing has really uh, come to the forefront on on the on the discussion ar- around this. Cena, do you have anything you can shed on that? Yeah, I've been looking into this because um, you know a friend of ours brought this to our attention, and it's it's actually very concerning to me because EMF mitigation is. Of, of paramount importance in my life because I happen to be one of the people who is sensitive to EMFs. So I've studied this field uh, in great detail and have done mitigation all around me uh, for l- over a decade now. So one of the things that's concerning to me, it's it's like what, what you're saying, Joel, it is very different. Like running a fiber optic cable, right? is gonna be very different than like turning on a Wi-Fi router um, or living right under a cell tower. And we do have a, a lot of now independent research studies that have shown that the biology of the body, like the physiology bo- of the body is changed when you are in proximity to these man-made EMFs, right? So there's naturally made EMFs like the sun emits EMFs, but we're talking about the man-made EMFs. And lots of studies have shown this even holding a cell phone in one hand and they'll draw blood from the hand. I believe it was like five minutes of holding the cell phone and it changed the shape of the red blood cells and made them stickier. Right. Mm. So it made the blood more viscous. So there's, there's, that's just one study. There's lots of studies showing this. There's people now who are studying this in livestock as well. And one of the reasons is because of precision agriculture. So um, this weekend I went on uh, was searching to see what is the government's stance on this. And I found the government accountabilities, the government accountability office um, conducted basically a report and they just released it. They just published it January 31st of this year. So when you look at their report, the first page of this report has this picture and I'm very visual. So this is very helpful for me. It's actually showing all the different ways in which the livestock or the plants could actually be exposed to EMFs. Now, that wasn't their intention behind creating that diagram, right? The GAO came out and they're concerned about um, the integrity of the system. And we can get into that, okay? Like foreign entities hacking into the system and stuff. That's what that report's about. But to answer your question, this picture is a very good graphic and we'll link to it in the show description because it shows a farm and it shows the crops and the cows. And then what it what it also shows is, so there's um, a cell tower that's having some kind of satellite on it. And there's a satel- there's an imagery satellite, there's a GPS satellite, 
there's communication satellite, right? And they're all bouncing these signals off. Um, so that's coming down onto, onto the farm as well, right? The EMFs from, from the air. Um, and then there's also a base station. So some of this, some of these technologies require different stations to be set up that are all can, that are also emitting some type of radiation. Um, there's data exchange services set up. Um, and then there's the equipment too. So sometimes the precision agriculture involves, for instance, um, automated mechanical weeders or uh, driverless tractors, for instance. And so these are all emitting um, some, some form to some degree of EMFs because they're having to sense things, right? Um, there's also technology that's like a remote sensing platform. So drones um, could be sensing and they're going to be sending out some kind of uh, radiation because they're sensing. Ground robots can be used. Um, there's in-ground sensors. That's another technology that can be used. And this one is used, per, according to the GAO, to provide farmers with near real-time information on the soil and plant properties like temperature, moisture, nutrients. Then you also have targeted spray systems. So these use machine learning like AI in order to be able to per precisely spray things in certain spots, you know? So you can see an upside, right? Okay, if you're gonna use chemicals, uh, yes, just selectively spray. So you don't get as much spray all over, you don't get the runoff into our, you know, the, the water system and the soil. But again, that targeted spray system is emitting some kind of signal. It's gonna involve radiation to some extent as with the, the automated uh, mechanical weeder. So, one of my big concerns in terms of what you've talked about so far is this near, it could be a near chronic exposure to right. some type of radiation. Yeah. So, so I had a, I was on a call just a couple of weeks ago with an attorney who's in this space, who is trying to fight for, um, for farmer, um, for, for land uh, protection. In other words, Right now, there are there are um, legislative legislative attempts to make all these towers um, to be able to put them in by eminent domain. So oh, that if, no. if so that if I as a landowner don't want one of these towers on my property, I can't stop a company from putting a tower on my property. They'll do it by eminent domain. So. This is this is developing, and so this this uh, uh, um, I talked with this attorney, who's been involved a lot with France, and she told me that um, in France, just in the last two months, they had a, a court ordered stop of a cell tower that was put up on a on a dairy farm in France, and immediately the farm the farmer was milking about two hundred cows, and the milk production dropped about 15 to 20 percent immediately and 40 of his 200 cows died <gasps> and so he sued he sued the cell tower company and got a an injunction to turn it off uh until they could do some more research uh cena i think i think one of the biggest problems here and, and we've done this we've dealt with this so many times that that this stuff is done without real testing there's not there's not any real-time testing thank you for joining us on beyond labels our mission with this podcast is to make it accessible to everyone but we are behind a paywall because the issues we discuss are often subject to censorship we run into that and so we have an extremely modest paywall to let us have the freedom to discuss the kind of issues we want to discuss in the way we want to discuss them. and you can become a member and enjoy all this content by clicking on the description box below. We look forward to having you join our family.